Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ, and welcome today to the service of worship at First Presbyterian Church, Hilton Head Island. I am Associate Pastor Diane Knopf, and on behalf of my colleague, Pastor Associate Pastor Elizabeth Johnson, and our mighty Crossroads worship team, we are so glad to be together with you in the house of the Lord today. Pastor Will is away at a celebration of life for his aunt and uncle, and we pray that he is having a very meaningful time with his family this weekend. Uh, but we do celebrate that the Spirit has led you here to this place today, whether you are here in person, whether you are with us online, whether you are a very first-time visitor or a long-time member. And I'm going to invite those of you that are here in person to go ahead and take those um, red friendship pads that you'll find right at the beginning of the pew rows and just invite you to put your name and other information on them and pass them along the rows so that we know you are here today. And for those of you with us online, we would invite you um, also to let us know that you are here so that we can celebrate that. There is a QR code that you'll find on your screen. You can hold up your device or you can also go to our website and on the home page there's a blue connect button and that will take you to a form where you can let us know you're here. We also have super fancy QR code uh, sheets that you can use to scan um, not only uh, your giving, uh, but ways to get involved in the life of the church. And you will also find those in the room at the back. As well, um, if you have a prayer concern today and you're here with us, uh, there are prayer cards in the friendship register or again at the back table there are cards. If you fill those out, uh, we will receive those if you give them to an usher or put them in the basket. And then I will incorporate them into our time of prayer. Or you can use the scan code or you can email Pastor Will, myself, Pastor Elizabeth, and you will be, can be assured that we will pray with and for you during this coming week. And our prayer chain team is also at the ready, so just indicate if you'd like for us to share that with them. That is a confidential ministry of prayer. Now, I have just a few announcements to bring. The first one is just for you to mark your calendars, and we hope you can attend and learn and enjoy the beauty of God's creation as we are going on a nature walk. And this is a guided nature walk. We are having Annalisa Itkor, who is a noted low country naturalist, helping us to learn and to interpret what it is we're seeing. Uh, so you don't even need to sign up. I think you just come join us at Pinckney Island next, let's see, a week from Wednesday, the 24th. We hope to see you there. Also, just a quick reminder, during this Easter season, we are gathering after each worship service for prayer. So if you have a need or a joy, you can look for me and also Ken Hyatt over in the back. We're going to go into that corner where it's a little more quiet, and we will pray with and for you. Now I'd like to introduce and ask to come forward Pastor Leon Dorleans. He is the founding director of Haiti Outreach Ministries, whose mission is to share the love of God and the good news of Jesus Christ through service and partnerships that assist the people of Haiti. Pastor Leon, we are so glad to have you with us today. Thank you. Thank and you. you are celebrating 35 years of work through yes. Haiti Outreach Ministries. Yes. Well, can you tell me just a little bit about what led you to this, um, this ministry, and you've given your, really your life to it. Can you tell me a little bit about that? That's a very, very good question, Pastor Dine. I grew up in Haiti, and everyone in my family thought that I was going to be a priest. <laughs> and... Uh, so I went to a right school, Catholic school, but when I was 17, I was caught reading the Bible. No. And I was kicked out of the school for oh, that. No. Oh, my goodness. And then there were about two or three years, I didn't want to do anything with the church, with Christians even. Mm. But somehow, God intervened. So I joined a Protestant church, then I went to Bible college. 
went to Bible College. I was ordained in 1975, and then I become a pastor for 52 years now after I ordained. And the Lord led me to start 23 churches in Haiti and several schools and medical clinics and vocational schools. And the Lord is doing great things to that. So it's just a providential yes, it is <laughs> that providential. led me to that. God is good. And, yes. and, and I enjoy doing what I'm doing. Oh, what a story, my yeah. goodness. And yeah. you mentioned, so there's medical clinics, there's oh, yeah. schools, there's churches. Yeah. I know um, though all those things are important, but the young people, we definitely love to hear about them. And I hear that they are still attending school, even in the midst of some of the unrest in yes. Port-au-Prince. Why is that so important to them? We have, uh, since 1990, my wife and I, I married up, guys. I want you to know that. <laughs> my wife is very, very smart, a lot smarter than I am. And she started a school back in October 1990. And I tell you what, we with 32 students, and now we have over 2,000 students. 2, and many of them graduated and become doctors, lawyers, and you name it, and pastors, everything. But our schools now, they keep coming. Haiti is terrible right now, mm -hmm. chaotic, insecure. But the children will come to school because we, the parents believe the next step for them is to have an education. No education, no progress. So the children are encouraged by their parents to come to school. And not only they receive a good education, we feed them. Mm, yeah. It's something that they don't get at home. Mm -hmm. So whether it is insecure or not, they come to school for a good education and for a good hot meal oh, wow. that if they stay home, they could not get. Yeah. So, and you have mentioned that sponsorships of those students are very important. As right well. now, we so, are facing a really problem because we lack sponsors. We have 417 children who are not sponsored at the school. And we're looking for sponsors to sponsor children and send them to school and make the next Leon. That's right, the next Leon. There's only one of you, but still, uh, you, your point yeah. is well taken. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Pastor Leon, as, as we get ready to close, where can you just give me an example of where you see God working, either in the midst of the Haiti Outreach Ministries or even in your own life? Uh, wow. Yeah. You, are, you ask good questions. <laughs> Where God is working in my life is that, uh, to me, it's very evident. I've been in the ministry for 52 years now. Mm -hmm. And it seems like the more I engage myself, the more excited I am about it. I love doing what I'm doing. Even what's going on in Haiti now, and I'm in the States, I tell you what, my spirit is in Haiti, my body is here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to go back. So to me, God is working in my life because he gives me a passion, a passion, a love to do what I'm doing. And when it comes to a Haiti Outreach Ministry, I see God is at work because our supporters, in spite of what's going on in Haiti, they are very faithful. They keep supporting the ministry. They're not going to give up in Haiti. They refuse and our support is doing very well, and I think it's going to be even much better because God is at work. That's right. That's Thank right. You. And so we have been partners or we have been supporters of this ministry for a number of years, right? We've yes. sent mission teams and financially. So, And if you, if you would like to hear more, um, Pastor Leon will be in our gathering space right after the service, yes. and you can ask him questions, and we'd love to have you get to know him better. We're also delighted he, in just a bit, is going to share the gospel text today in Creole while we follow along on the screens in English, and he will also lead us and a prayer for illumination. So, Pastor Leanne, thank you, and God bless you. We appreciate your presence here with us today. Thank you. Today. Thank you very much, God Pastor Diane. Thank you. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. And you'll have a chance um, it, right now to say hello to Pastor Leon if you'd like, because we are going to greet one another in the joy of the Lord. And I invite you to begin by first making sure we give a big wave of welcome to those worshiping with us online.
Good morning, church. Truly, it's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And as always, we encourage you to participate in the praise and in the worship. This particular song is uh, claiming the blessing that we, and the reason why we're here today, I don't know what you believe, but I believe that uh, we're going to hear a good word from God. We're going to hear something about salvation and deliverance. This is what I believe. Please join us.
salvation God. Salvation I You said if I'm sick and Lord. And that's what I believe. I keep on deliverance. You said you were Lord, and that's what I believe. I believe, I believe. I believe, I receive. No doubt, my mind, no doubt, no. That's what I believe. Believe it. Claim it and receive it today. Yes, we are still basking in the glory of what Jesus did on the cross for us. The Son of God gave his life that we might all have a right to the freedom and salvation in life. So glad to have Brian Stulagros in worship with us today. A guitar. How about that? <laughs>
sing out, church. On the altar of our praise, let there be no higher name. Jesus, Son of God, you lay down your perfect life. You are the sacrifice. Jesus, Son of God, on the altar of our praise. The word of God will be read from Luke chapter 24, verses 36, the latter part of it, to verse 48. I will read it for you in my own language, and while you follow in it in your own language, and together we we'll make sense out of it. <laughs> La paix soit avec vous. Saisie de frayeur et d'épouvante, ils croyaient voir un esprit. Mais il leur dit, « Pourquoi êtes-vous troublés? Et pourquoi pareille pensée s'élève-t-elle dans vos cœurs? Voyez mes mains et mes pieds. C'est bien moi. Touchez-moi et voyez. Un esprit n'a ni chair ni os, comme vous voyez que j'ai. » Et en disant cela, il leur montra ses mains et ses pieds comme dans leur joie, ils ne croyaient pas encore qu'il était dans l'étonnement, il leur dit, « Avez-vous ici quelque chose à manger? » Ils lui présentèrent du poisson rôti et un rayon de miel. Il en prit et il mangea devant eux. Puis il leur dit, « C'est là ce que je vous ai dit lorsque j'étais encore avec vous. » qu'il fallait que s'accomplisse tout ce qui est écrit de moi dans la loi de Moïse, dans les prophètes et les psaumes. Alors, il leur ouvrit l'esprit afin qu'ils comprissent les Écritures. Et il leur dit, « Ainsi, il est écrit que le Christ souffrait et qu'il ressusciterait des morts le troisième jour, et que la repentance et le pardon des péchés seraient prêchés en son nom en toutes les nations, a commencé par Jérusalem, vous êtes témoin de ces choses. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Father, we thank you so very much. In our moment of difficulties, you are there. You appear to bring us peace. In our moment of despair, 
you always let us know that you are the God of comfort. As we're celebrating Easter season, may we truly remember that we are not by ourselves in this world. Christ is alive. He's alive in our lives. And he's here to bring us peace and hope. In his name we pray. Amen. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me? Holy One, quiet any voice in our minds but your own. God, I pray that you will speak through me, or if needed, speak in spite of me. Amen. Growing up, we always sat down to dinner together. And there were, uh, we weren't allowed to have the television on, we weren't allowed to have any devices at the table. We weren't allowed to have any distractions whatsoever. It was sacred family time, a time that we gathered together once a day to share a meal. Now, my brother was the pickiest eater on the planet, and I am convinced that he somehow would share his llama beans and squash with our dog. <clears throat> When we were in middle school, my mom assigned us one night a week to cook. We decided on our menu. We were required to give her a grocery list 24 hours in advance. That was the deal. As teenagers, we didn't always plan ahead and often had to borrow some ingredients from a good-hearted neighbor. You could always count on my brother for a good Italian meal. Spaghetti, lasagna, pizza. I was more of a casserole girl. Chicken tetrazzini, chicken pot pie, chicken divan. My mom did the heavy lifting, making roasts with potatoes and carrots, making homemade buttermilk biscuits and pound cake. Am I making you hungry? In this morning's scripture, Jesus was hungry. Proceeding our reading this morning, Jesus was on his Emmaus Road adventure where he walked with two disciples that did not recognize him. Do you remember this story? And as they came near the village, they urged Jesus, stay with us for the day is almost over. And so he stayed with them and when he was at table with them, he took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, and they recognized him, and he vanished. Do you remember this? <clears throat> they got up, leaving their meal on the table forgotten, and went straight back to Jerusalem to tell the others that they had seen Jesus. In this late-night Easter appearance, Jesus appears to them as they are telling the disciples, we've seen Jesus. He stood among them and greeted them with a traditional peace, and he showed them his hands and feet. But his friends were terrified, thinking that they were seeing a ghost. Then, to their astonishment, Jesus says, you got anything to eat around here? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he ate it in their presence. Such a simple act, such a human act, but something shifted as a result of it. As Jesus ate the, the fish, the disciples' fear diminished just enough to draw closer to him and actually listen to what he said, allowing Jesus to open their minds to understand. Like Pastor Diane said last week, Jesus met the disciples right where they were 
and gently guided them to a deeper faith and a deeper understanding. By the end of this encounter, they were no longer frightened men. They became witnesses to these things, empowered for ministry, simply by expressing hunger, inviting hospitality, and accepting nourishment. Jesus turned a simple meal into something much more. From the Passover feast to the Lord's Supper and banquets in the early church, God's people have been transformed by common, me common meals. When Jesus broke bread with people, there was always something more going on. In Scripture, we discover that table fellowship shapes and builds our communities of faith. One of the most important disciplines for us to recover in the kind of world in which we live, wrote author Barry Jones of the book Dwell, Life with God for the World, is the discipline of table fellowship. Now, we know when Jesus returns, there will be some serious table fellowship. In fact, we are promised a heavenly banquet. God will prepare a great feast with rich food for all people, Isaiah 25 reads, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats, and the finest of wines. Fabulous table ship. fellowship awaits us all. But I believe that same kind of table fellowship can happen here on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus used tables as a place of connection. Just like a family sharing a meal together, Jesus used table fellowship as a time to check in with others and build relationships. From the miraculous loaves and fishes, lunch with Zacchaeus and meals with Mary and Martha to his fish-eating resurrection appearance to the disciples. Jesus made connections with people by sharing a meal. Whether gathering around a table or on a beach or on a mountaintop, when Jesus broke bread with others, deep conversations occurred. Spiritual truths were revealed. Lives were changed. We, too, can use our tables as a time to connect with our family and friends, to have meaningful conversations, and to deepen our relationships with one another. Our tables can also be used as a place of blessing, a place to bless others and remember God's blessings to us. If your family needs a good resource for making your table a place of blessing— Nancy Guthrie's book, One Year of Dinner Table Devotions, is a, good, is a good one. Simple prayers like this one from the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord God, King of the universe. You give us food to sustain our lives and make our hearts glad through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Remind us that praying before meals can make our table a place of blessing. Jesus often used tables as a place for safe brokenness. In his resurrection appearance on the beach, when the disciples had been out all night as unsuccessful fishermen, Jesus called, come and have breakfast. He used this meal to acknowledge Peter's shame over his betrayal of Jesus. Three times he asked Peter, do you love me? His questions served to reinstate Peter to the fold, giving him a clean slate. When we share our sorrows, when we meet a friend for coffee to listen or cry or pray together, we are offering a safe place for brokenness where others can find understanding, grace, and maybe even forgiveness when they need it the most. A few years ago, when I was at the Montreat Youth Conference, I noticed two turquoise tables outside of Anderson Auditorium. 
Have you ever heard of the turquoise table movement? It's a wonderful example of table fellowship started by Christian Schnell in Austin, Texas. She knew God was calling her into mission. She just didn't know what it would involve. Take a look at this video. I really thought my calling would be international, and I never, never in a million years thought that the Lord would ask me to walk outside of my door in the mission field where I live and get to know my neighbors. I always knew we were supposed to love our neighbors because that's the great commandment. But how you live that out day to day is hard, um, especially when you don't know your neighbors, which is the situation I was in. I did not know my neighbors. Sure, I knew, you know, a handful of them. And so there was this huge question of what do you want me to do, Lord? Here I am, Lord. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to walk across the street and bang on doors? Do you want me to take cookies? What do you want me to do, Lord? God answers prayers in really winsome ways. I was hosting a party with a friend in our backyard, and I didn't have any tables. And so I ordered a picnic table from Lowe's. And when it arrived two days later, I knew. I knew that for the purposes of the party, I was going to have it in my backyard. But as soon as that party was over, I was moving that table in the front yard, and it was going to be a gathering place. And so I painted it turquoise, which is my favorite color. And I did. I put it outside underneath the tree in the front yard. I, it was awkward at first. So I have this table. It's bright turquoise. It's sitting in the front yard. And now I'm like, well, now what do I do? So I took a whole bunch of stuff out with me. I took my phone and my journal and my computer. And I even um, I had some art stuff that I was working on because, you know, I needed to look like I was just doing something. By going out front, I was saying to God, here I am, Lord. Your will be done. Go before, behind, and beside me into the neighborhood. And that very day, life changed. And I met a neighbor within three hours of putting a table out in my front yard. A lot has happened since putting the table out there. There are a handful of women who are now very close friends who I did not know. More intimately, um, it's a place where I can meet and have met neighbors um, who now pop by with coffee and just for 15 minutes, a, co a conversation over coffee that wouldn't have happened. Loving my neighbors has taught me how to love God better. It's drawn me into deeper relationship with Him. You don't need permission or a program to go outside and be who Christ has called you to be. When we open up our front door, when we take three steps right out our front yard, good things happen. Open up your door and let God do the rest. How might God be calling you to use your table, to offer hospitality to the broken, to share your blessings with others, to build deeper relationships? Maybe you are a member of Amazing Grazen here at First Presbyterian Church, a small group that gathers in each other's homes to share a meal. Or maybe you participate in the Breaking Bread Ministry here at church. Maybe you invite new neighbors or new members over for dinner. We heard this morning how Haiti Outreach Ministries not only educates children, but feeds children children. And this is a way to build trust and acceptance. In this morning's reading, after eating fish, Luke reported that Jesus opened the disciples' minds to understand the scriptures and told them, you are witnesses of these things. As your minister of evangelism and engagement, I got to tell you, I love it when Jesus says things like that. It's a good reminder to us that we are witnesses of these things too. We are called to witness God's love for us. We are called to witness the resurrection by living into the hope that we have through Jesus Christ. We are called to witness God's lavish hospitality to all those we encounter. 
God sets a table for us, even in the presence of our enemies, where our cup overflows with new expectations. Can we do the same for others? At our table, at God's table, our strength is restored. And like Peter, we are reconciled and blessed with a new slate. May we offer that same grace to each other. At God's table, even when uncomfortable things happen, we find safety and acceptance. May we respond to one another with that same unconditional love. Come to the table, you who hunger for justice for the poor, who endure poverty and food insecurity. May we hunger for kindness and righteousness in our lives and in our leaders. May we hunger for kindness to all people in every place. May our tables share the harvest as Jesus did with the loaves and fishes. May our tables offer comfort in the midst of brokenness. And may our tables be big enough and gracious enough to welcome the lonely and the lost as Jesus did for Zacchaeus and many others. Who will you invite to your table. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Elizabeth. And I love that. I love all of it. But the idea that we are witnesses, boy, that's a life's work, isn't it? And uh, so who we eat with or don't eat with, uh, the community that we build around us is really all in service to sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. And here at First Presbyterian Church, we want to help change lives and make disciples. And I don't know if you know that uh, one of the ways we do that is through our visual arts ministry. They are underneath the um, umbrella of our worship and music. And if you've seen in the South Hall and by the choir room near the gathering space, lovely, lovely Christian art like this um, woodcut of King David. Uh, these uh, are given to us on loan. We rent them from this particular collection is the Sandra Bowden Art Collection. And your money makes it possible for us to rent these beautiful pieces to speak of the goodness of God, not only uh, you know, verbally, but visually. And so if you haven't had a chance first to walk through the collection, it's here till the end of May. So I pray that you do that. And there is a sheet that will guide you in terms of interpreting what the different pieces are. Our visual arts team, members of them will also be in our gathering space today. Not only they can tell you about their work, but there's something very exciting coming up. This fall, they are going to be organizing a member and friend art show. So your creative work will be showcased because again, these gifts that you have given by God need to be celebrated and seen and witnessed too. So thank you for your generosity in supporting the missions and ministries of this church. And as we continue in our worship of God, uh, we bear witness to his goodness through what we give and how we live. So let us now receive our morning offering. I will feast at the table of the Lord I will feast at the table of the Lord I won't hunger anymore at his table
Please join with me now in a time of prayer, and then we will say together the Lord's Prayer. O God of the empty tomb and the open road, who meets us at tables everywhere and blesses us, thank you for sending your servant Jesus to show us the way to abundant life here and now. We pray that he would abide today with those who are experiencing loss, the loss of a loved one, or who themselves are facing death. We pray for those who have lost jobs or dreams. We pray for those who have been saddened by broken relationships. We pray that you would strengthen them with the knowledge that in Jesus Christ, Nothing can separate us from you. Oh God, we remember how your apostles proclaimed faith in Jesus' name and praised your power to make us whole and strong. Grant today, O oh God, wholeness to all who are ill in body, mind, or spirit. Be with those who care for them. Bring your peace and wholeness to victims of violence, oppression, terror, or abuse. Be with friends in conflict and families in distress. And minister to all who are lonely. Especially today, we pray for the people of Haiti and for the faithful work of Pastor Leon and all those who serve with him and Haiti Outreach Ministries. We pray that you would continue to grant them strength, bless them with peace, bring continued hope and healing to this nation, that they may shine even more brightly for your glory. Oh God, we pause now to offer to you the prayers uh, that are on our hearts today. First, from the cards that we have received, we lift to you Rob, Manuela, Bob. Be with them in their need. We lift to you Joanne, Laurel, Jackie, and Alex. Remind them that they are your beloved children. And we pray for your comfort for the Sluzny and Fitzgerald families as they are mourning the loss of their dear one. Oh God, now we pray that you would hear the prayers that we carry with us in our hearts as we lift them to you either in silence or in spoken word. Family of Margaret Stewart. For Elizabeth's mother.
God, receive our prayers. Teach us to love one another from the heart and to live as brothers and sisters gathered around your table that we may witness to all the world of your goodness and to the power of him who is the resurrection and the life, Jesus Christ, who taught us when we pray to say together, Our Father, you art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand and join us. We are so grateful for the word of God coming from our messenger today. We continue to pray for Pastor Leon and Haiti and all the nations of this world as there's so much unrest but we have this assurance that God is still in control. This is our God. We claim that. We believe that today. Amen, church? This is our God. Remember those walls that we call sin and shame. They were like prisons that we couldn't escape. But he came and he died and he rose. Those walls are rubble now. Remember those giants we call death and grave. They were like mountains that stood in our way, but he came and he died and he rose. Those giants are dead now. This is our God. This is who he is. He loves us. This is our God. This is what he does. He saves Remember that fear that took our breath away. They so weak that we could barely pray. But he heard every word, every whisper. Now those altars in the wilderness tell the story of his
Just a reminder that if you would like prayer, um, Pastor Diane and uh, a Stephen minister or a deacon, I'm not sure who, will be back there to um, pray in the back corner. So I hope that you will um, feel free to go back there and, and receive prayer. My charge to you this week is to think about who God might be calling you to invite to your table as you leave this place, go knowing that by the providence of God, you were born. And by God's grace, you are kept all the day long. And by God's love for you, revealed through Jesus Christ, you are redeemed. Go in peace. Amen.
succeed. No doubt, no. That's what I believe. That's what I believe. 